Okay. So this one is just like uh, 2-4 in the sense that it's sort of a backwards one. So we're going to be adding two vectors together, but we don't know what those two vectors are, but we know what the result is. And in this case, the result is 450 pounds straight down. Okay. Like the last one, we know direction, we just don't know magnitude. All right. Um, and when I say direction on this one, what I really mean is, is we know the angles that are going, uh, that are playing into this. So let's, let's get into it here. I know I'm going to have a vector along this one. And let me call that vector C. And I know I'm going to have a vector along this guy here. And I'll call that vector B just like that. Now, what I don't know is, does C, the vector, start at C and go up to A, or does it start at A and go down to Z? Okay. So in other words, where do I put the arrowhead? Is it at the t on the left or on the right? Same thing with my vector B. I don't know what its orientation is. Is it, is it going up and to the right or is it going down and to the left? We don't know that. So what we have to do is we've got to experiment just a little bit, try different scenarios out. So let's try a scenario where both C and B are pointing at A. Okay, let's just see what happens. So if C is pointing towards A, I'm going to have this. And then B has got to, has to point towards A also. So if I add it on there, I start here and I end up there. And that means my resultant is this. And that does not match my 450 vertical. Not, not at all. Okay. So now let's see what happens if both these guys are, let's say, they start at A and they move away, both of them. Uh, all right, and so I've got C here moving that way, and then B is going to be, okay, yeah, well, look, that isn't going to work either, okay? So that doesn't help me out at all, okay? So one's towards A and one's away from A. Now i got to look at those options. Give me just a second. Let me um, get rid of some of this stuff here. Otherwise, and my page is going to get super messy. All right. So let's start with the idea that C is moving or that uh, there, that B is moving towards the point A. So B is here. Oops. Sorry about that. So I'm going to put B in here like this. And let's say C is moving away. So then that could be like this. All right. So then my resultant would be something like this. Okay. Well, that's exactly opposite. So that doesn't help us out. All right. We've tried them parallel up and to the right, parallel down and to the left. Here's our one anti-parallel version. Let's try another anti-parallel version. Let me erase these guys. I, I bet I can just undo them real quick. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this case, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to say that C is moving towards the point A and B is moving away. And look at that. That works. Start to finish. There's our resultant right there. Okay. So here is C and here is B just like that. Okay. So we've got the orientation down now. That's good. Now what we need to do is uh, work out the angles of our, um, uh, of, of, in our little triangle there. Okay. And um, I know that I've got the angle 45 here which is between my resultant and B like that. So that tells me, 
Okay, so we extend this here. So I'm extending R straight down. Let me do a better job on that. Sorry about that. Okay, so if I extend R as because R is vertical. All right, and extend this guy here. That means this is 45 degrees. Since that's 45 degrees, then that means it's 45 degrees inside here. Okay, now I know also up here that I've got this 30 degree angle, which is when C and B cross each other. And that tells me that this angle in here is also 30 degrees. So I've got my 30 degree angle right in here like this. And so then my final angle there um, is going to be um, 105. Okay. One, zero, five. Getting a little compressed in there. Sorry about that. But you get the idea. Um, let's get some labels on there because it's easier to work with labels. Uh, again, we'll say we'll call this a gamma because it's opposite of C. We'll call this beta and we'll call. Oh, 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 oh. Let's, yeah, let's not do that. That's going to be kind of messy. Um, oh, it doesn't matter all that much. Okay, we'll call, we'll go ahead and call that gamma. We'll call this guy alpha and we'll call this guy beta. Okay. Sometimes when you label things, they work out real nice and convenient and other times they, they just don't. Okay. But now we are ready to find C and B because we've got all of our angles. And this one's crying out for us to use the law of sines again, which means I'm going to have C over, well, let me turn it, I like to turn it around. We're going to have the sine of gamma over C, and that's going to be equal to the sine of beta over B. And then our last one is the sine of alpha over R. Okay. And so our algebra is going to be just like what we had before. So if I want to get C. All right. So the angle that I know is, um, what is the angle? At which angle? Do I, well, I know all the angles. Okay. What length do I know? I know R. So I got to compare I got to compare this side to this side. So C's going over, R's coming back. I got my R here. And then we're going to have sine of alpha divided by the sine of gamma. And when you run those numbers, uh, what you're going to get is 6, 36.4. Okay. And then if we do the same thing for finding B, we're going to have R sine beta over the sine of gamma. And that's going to work out to be 869.3. Okay. Just like that. So those then become uh, our components in those particular directions. All right.